Hello everybody, this is Saint the Gamer, and today we're going to be talking about how to gut a station hopper mackerel. Those of you who are unaware, this is from the game Hard Space Shipbreaker. Highly recommend it. It is on Steam. Uh, it's in, currently in early access, but it runs like a charm. I highly recommend it to anyone who enjoys uh, these sorts of games. Airlock pressure levels dropping. Alright, now the Airlock first thing you always do in any given mackerel is depressurize the ship and the airlock. Air pressure level decreasing. If your light is red on the atmospheric regulator, you know that the ship is now depressurized. Let's go ahead and cut the front of the ship off as well as this first fuel panel. Now if you can, you can get down here and you can angle your cutter in such a way as to get multiple cutting points in the same cut. That's especially helpful in the race where time is everything. Sometimes the mackerels will have an aluminum sewing piece instead of a carbon one. So you want to check for that occasionally, just double check and make sure that you're not cutting off an aluminum piece if you don't have to. The aluminum pieces can go into the furnace with the rest of the ship's frame, whereas the nanocarbons, nanocarbon pieces should be separated and sent into the processor, as we are doing now. As always, tethers are your best friend and you should use them whenever possible. If you're going after the stickers, you also want to make sure you've got these food packs and toss them into the furnace. I believe it's 50 food packs for one of the stickers. Could be wrong. You can also do the drinks. For now though, I'm going to move on. Some people like to tether the furniture into the barge, and that can save you time, especially on the uh, race. However, we're not on your race, and I feel like taking my time, because why the heck not? Now, this last uh, floor panel piece will have a computer terminal on it if you're in the higher ranked mackerels. Putting the utility key into the computer terminal before cutting the Salvage floor panel security. from the ship will disable, safely disable the thruster. I choose not to do that because utility keys are far too valuable to use on a macro. I prefer to save them for the geckos. Okay, now that we've cut all of the ceiling and the floor pieces off, we're going to want to make sure that the front and back of the ship are separated, and it looks like we've cut both of those off. And now we're going to go over here into the side, and we're going to turn off the fuel. Sometimes the fuel pipes will go along the ceiling, not always. In this case, it goes into the back of the ship. Now there's a cutting point behind that uh, fuel tank, however, we're not going to go after it yet because... We, uh, because there's too much of a risk of setting off the fuel tank, and I don't want to blow the ship up. If you go into a green cutting point like this, like the one I just destroyed a second ago, you can use the charge to push on your, uh, grappler to destroy it. If you do not have the charge to push feature yet, then you can just throw a light at it or something. Down. Deposited. Let's double check our work orders and see how we're doing on those. Looks like we're doing pretty well so far, especially the nanocarbon. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit transferred. There we go. While we're over here, let's go ahead and get the reactor. You never want to pull the reactor out unless you already have a clear path to the barge. The reason for that is because the reactor begins to melt down the second you pull it out of the reactor plate. Uh, 
All right, and there's no nothing on the side there, so we're gonna go ahead and move on. It's really nice that the front of the ship uh, came apart so easily. Most of the time, it stays connected to the uh, ship's frame, and you have to pull it apart with the tether. So that's actually really a nice surprise. Now the unique thing about station hoppers uh, that's different from the other um, mackerels is the fact that the they usually have a lot of furniture on them, like the different ships, or like the different uh, chairs and stuff. Uh, they often also have oxygen tanks and fuel tanks that you, the player, can use. The lore for that comes from the idea that the station hoppers are supposed to be your basically space taxis. Uh, a bunch of people want to go from one station or one planet to another, so they get on a, sp a station hopper. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. One really cool ship I think the developers could add in the future would be a luxury mackerel because we all know that Sir Worth a Lot uh, is not going to get on the same station hopper as all the rest of the plebs. He's going to hire one for himself and he can afford it. So I think that could be a really cool addition. Be careful with power cells and power junction boxes because they often spark when you pull them off. And if you have anything explosive nearby, such as an active fuel line, uh, then it can cause a lot of explosions. Let's go and grab this oxygen now. If you have repair kits, always grab them because they're gonna, that's going to save you a bunch of money. And we need the atmospheric regulator. And it looks like that's everything we're going to need to grab from here. So let's go ahead and tether the frame of the ship into the... Oh hell. Caution. Eh, hopefully it'll help. Let's need the rest of these bottles into the furnace so I can get that sticker. The sticker for the food and the sticker for the bottles are actually separate for some reason. It's pretty interesting actually. Um, Alright, so we have that done. Now the back of the ship is too heavy for us to use the charge push like I just attempted. So we're going to have to use a tether to move it. Sometimes you get those frame drops that we just experienced uh, when you're destroying the frames of the ship in the furnace. Reason being the destroying things in the furnace just takes a lot of... Uh, um, RAM, I think is what it's called. A lot of memory, essentially. Oh crap, did that connect to the whole piece? Gosh darn it, I was hoping to connect it to the duster. Okay. That's just my alarm going off. After we're done here, I need to go pull my dinner out of the oven. Usually, once you tether the uh, duster, it's able to go into the barge. This time, we kept using the tether for a bunch of different reasons, so we ended up having to uh, push it out of the back of the ship ourselves. You always want to try and tether the thrusters to the uh, the mackerel thrusters to the barge if possible before you uh, separate them from the back of the ship. Because if you don't, they're going to try and blow up the back of the ship and they usually succeed. Alright, so now I have to handle the cockpit. Once we remove the storage bins, we will be able to take the frame of the door off. 
Okay, I need someone to knock all the way in. Salvage secured. Hmm. Account credit applied. All right. Um. Got about five minutes left in this shift, Cutter. Don't bite off more than you can chew. We wrap. Secured. All right, you can see the door of the or the frame of the door just goes ahead and pops off. Now this says it is aluminum, so we're going to toss this into the furnace. Now you see that box right there? That's going to be our data drive. Now you need to get a couple of these computer terminals to finish off our work orders. Gain them at this point is going to be really easy. First thing we're going to do is pull off the chairs. Let's go and grab the atmospheric regulator while we're here. Now you want to be really careful when you're pulling out the computer terminals because they are very fragile. If you hit them against anything, then they're going to lose health really fast and start sparking everywhere and it's going to destroy other electronics nearby. And if you have flammable stuff nearby or like fires, it's a huge pain. You don't want to do that if you can avoid it. All right, so we have about four minutes left, so let's go ahead and work on the rest of the cockpit. Now, if this was the race, we would just tether this straight into the processor at this point, because glass and aluminum roy really aren't worth a whole ton, but, I mean, we're not in the race, so why not take our time and get the whole buffalo, right? There we are. Deposit accepted. Alright, so we separated one of the sides, the second side. Alright, the second side is now. Oh, nope, it's still holding on down there. Now these lights up here, they are there, however the amount of time it takes to remove them uh, is pretty long and you actually end up losing money on it when you consider the amount of oxygen that is taken up uh, during the time you're trying to remove them. So you generally won't try to do that unless you need to throw it at a, um, at a green cut guard or something. So. Let's go throw these aluminum panels into the out. furnace. Reminder, asphyxiation can lead to we have about a minute of oxygen left. Let's start getting this thing into the processor. When it goes forward, it's going to leave all these aluminum panels behind, which is super nice. It's really easy for us to just go ahead and throw those into the furnace that is inside of the processor. And we're good to go. Warning. Oxygen reserves are critical. And that is how you got a station hopper mackerel. You can see we pulled $2.8 million worth of stuff out of there. We destroyed a bit of salvage but not a whole lot in the grand scheme of things looks like we lost an atmospheric regulator it probably bounced out of the barge sometimes that happens it's it happens um lost some, a little bit of aluminum the reactor plates a little bit of nanocarbon but oh no not too bad i'm wondering how we lost the fuel tank because i thought we got both of those but apparently we lost one of them hmm well, it is what it is. So, our work order shows that we got everything there. So, we maxed out the amount of uh, links tokens that we can get. And we're done. So, thank you very much for uh, watching this tutorial. And like and subscribe and have a good day.